seeing double. You're just seeing the next big step in aircraft design, or what some more imaginative engineers would have you to believe. The double or twin fuselage plane concept is one that has been tested for well over 70 years with various different successes and failures, but never held mainstream appeal. Why was it never a huge success and could we see a new design right around the corner? Let's find out together in this episode of When it comes to aircraft design, there are three main considerations, capacity, range and speed. Speed is relatively straightforward hurdle to conquer. You strap some bad boy engines to an aircraft, kick it to the max and break some poor farmer's window with a sonic boom. We've had the technology forever and there isn't any roadblocks now, just the appetite from aircraft customers. The other two considerations, range and capacity, are a bigger can of worms. Both of them are intertwined and are the result of aircraft size. A bigger aircraft can logically carry more passengers and cargo, but in turn costs more in fuel to operate. To get around that, the bigger plane has a larger fuel tank, increasing its size and weight and then creating that balanced trade-off. This can lead to some awkward issues where a plane can be so large and have an impressive range, but actually carry less than its internal volume, the exact major flaw of the Airbus A380 cargo variant. But what if there was a way to simultaneously increase the range and capacity without trading off for both? It's not making an aircraft taller, thicker or longer, but rather doubling it. Thus, the twin fuselage concept was born. Of course, all of this effort to slap together a fighter plane with two fuselages is kind of ridiculous when you consider that they could have just used today's video sponsor. Kami Koto Japanese Steel Knives. That's right, just like I upgraded my computer to handle incredible graphics in these videos, I also upgraded my kitchen as well by using the best Japanese steel knives that you can buy. Using traditional techniques and local Japanese steel, Kami Koto crafts each blade over several years. Yes, that's right, years, before the knife smiths individually sign off each blade meaning not only is the blade super sharp, but it has a lifetime guarantee. They also have Kami Koto sharpening weight stones, so you can be just like those Michelin star chefs using them in restaurants. Personally, I was super impressed that it came in a beautiful, heavy duty ash wood box for storage and display, for when I'm not trying them out on this fancy steak. Oh my God, it's like butter. Wow. Damn. If you want to get some Japanese steel knives in your arsenal, Kami Koto has a $50 off for this holiday period using the code FOUND, only at kamikoto.com slash found. That's on top of their current deals. Check them out whilst I eat this great steak. While there have been many different double fuselage concepts in history, such as the Nazi BF-109Z, and the HE-111Z filling. We wouldn't see the real production rollout of this design until the end of World War II with the North American P-82 twin Mustang. This latter aircraft, the Svilling, would have extra engines in the mid-wing between the two fuselages to give it extra power to pull huge Nazi gliders like the ME321. But with few gliders built and no aerial invasion upcoming for the Nazi Empire, there wasn't much need for the tug. The original P-51 Mustang had proven itself throughout the conflict, but it had one small issue. Its small fuel tank meant it was not suitable for flights over the vast Pacific Ocean. Engineers at North American realized that the easiest way to fix this was not with a wholly new concept, but simply joining two Mustang fuselages together, doubling the amount of fuel almost instantly. Of course, I need to point out in my narrative here that eventually the engineers started from scratch with this as a new design, but the resemblance to the original Mustang is obvious. 
This double trouble Mustang would have a longer fuselage than the original by 57 inches, with more fuel tanks behind each cockpit and a new center wing section containing another six M3 Browning machine guns. That's a lot of firepower. There was also a consideration to boost that with a 40mm cannon, but it never left the drawing board. You'll also notice that at the rear that there was a dorsal fillet between the two tails for stability in case of engine failure. Now you've probably been itching to ask, what about that situation with the two pilots? Which one controlled the plane? The original design had both pilots having full control so they could alternate on long missions allowing the other to rest. But further development made the left the pilot seat and the right a radar operator. The overall carrying capacity was a thousand pounds, allowing for more fuel or bombs over the original design. This capacity would have allowed a huge range of 2,240 miles, nearly double the original design. This suited the plane well, as its actual role was to be a very long range escort fighter for the Boeing B-29 Super Fortress for missions with a range over 2,000 miles, and later a bomber interceptor against those pesky Soviets. The aircraft did its first test flight in June 1945 and the US Air Force officers were so darn impressed that they ordered its full production right away. It set several records such as Hawaii to New York in only 14 hours and 32 minutes non-stop, setting the unbeaten record of the longest non-stop flight ever made by a propeller-driven fighter. The Air Force accepted a total of 272 F-82s, including 22 prototypes, test and early production aircraft, and it would serve proudly in the Korean War until its role was succeeded by the Republic F-84E Thunderjet in the early 1950s. This beautiful aircraft was not only notable for its double fuselage design with a cockpit on each side, but also that it was the last piston-engined fighter jet ordered by the US before switching exclusively to jet fighters. But let me tell you boys and girls, our story of the double fuselage doesn't stop here. One of the hidden advantages of twin fuselages was the ability to burn double the amount of fuel at once for additional power, meaning these concepts could effectively be fantastic at carrying heavy loads. Everything from iron ore to oil to say for example, a space shuttle. In the 1970s, NASA and the USSR were trying to come up with the next launch system to take man to the outer limit and a certain logic led them to consider putting a shuttle on a vast flying mothership. After all, a conventional plane could fly high in the sky, launch a rocket, and remove the significant chunk of fuel burn to get off from sea level. Plus it would avoid inefficient disposable rocket boosters, remove expensive ground infrastructure, and would make launch schedules a whole lot more flexible. Boeing and Lockheed were both selected to come up with designs for the concept under a NASA plan. It was to save money on developing a new aircraft from scratch by making it out of existing aircraft parts on the market. Boeing would propose the Boeing 747 as its shuttle launcher and Lockheed with its C-5 Galaxy design. The issue is, these concepts were so huge, requiring whole airports to be built and expensive in terms of research and development, that it was more simple for NASA to just launch the rockets from its existing launch sites. But if you've been around aviation for a while, then you know that the Russians had their own insane twin fuselage concept, the twin AN-225. However, this project, along with an even crazier concept, the Monia 1000 Heracles, probably deserve their own videos, so stay tuned for them in the future. But that being said, the idea of rocket launches wasn't completely thrown out of the window. In the middle of the Mojave Desert in 2019, the scale composite its Model 351 Strato launch took to the skies. With twin fuselages 73 meters long, 28 wheels, and a wingspan of 385 feet, it's the widest plane flying today. On its right, there is a crew deck for three, and the other fuselage allows up to 2,500 pounds of cargo for specific rocket launch missions, being able to launch up to three at once. 
tested twice, this insane aircraft will be launching rockets soon from 2022, and perhaps even manned aircraft from 2023. This aircraft joins the other scale composite dual fuselage aircraft, such as the White Knight 2 that operates for Virgin Galactic on a similar mission, although at a much more reasonable scale. So what of passenger designs? Concepts have been built before World War II back into the 1930s, such as the Savoia Machete S-55 and S-66. But it would be a decent amount of time until the capacity problems of the modern aviation world would lead us to twin fuselage plans being drawn up. There was a brief branch into double low passenger designs, but these were really two fuselages cut in half and then pasted together to increase passenger capacity. Whilst it's technically a double fuselage, it kind of takes away from the spirit of this video, so I suggest you actually check out this other video I did of the Airbus A380 development. Speaking of Airbus, however, in 2008 they actually patented an A20 fuselage design. It shows the fuselage is connected by way of two forward swept wings with the front wing position lower than the rear upper wing. The engines would have been located near the end of the plane. Believe it or not, this patent is very similar to one by Boeing that featured twin Boeing 737 fuselages with twin engines in the middle. Obviously the jury is still out if either Boeing or Airbus will take actions on the respective patents, but one can hope. There have also been other inklings of designs from Northrop Grunman of a future passenger aircraft, with twin engines between the two fuselages, which actually looks quite nice. But apart from these concepts, it looks like we might be stuck with our boring single fuselage planes for a while longer. Littered throughout history, there are many other concepts that deserve their own videos. NASA studies into the twin fuselage concept led them down a road of not only double concepts, but triple fuselage concepts as well, with a 427 foot wing and being able to carry up to 900 passengers in each body. But of course, I'm gonna leave you at this. At the start of the video, I said that there was always a trade-off between speed, capacity, and range. Well, it turns out that I lied, because there is one more design of a double American Concorde, which I think you'll agree is the ultimate twin fuselage plane. Oh, and don't forget to check out the Kamikoto Holiday Sale, where it's $50 off for found and explained viewers on top of their current holiday sale. Link down below. If you love aviation, then I suggest you check out the social media channels for Found and Explained. We've got everything from Facebook to Instagram to TikTok and a Discord channel where you can come on and chat to other fans of the channel. And if you want to become a super fan, then we also have channel memberships and Patreon. By signing up, you get to suggest future topics, chat with me direct, and also see videos early, which is pretty damn cool because it means you get to put first at the bottom of this video. Thanks so much for watching.